on welcome back. So now we're ready to set up our NSXT edges and we're gonna do the actual deployment from the NSXT manager. To do that, we're gonna start as always at our system link. Then we're gonna go over to fabric and then nodes. Once we get here, before we actually do the actual edge transport nodes, which will be from here, this is where we'll actually be deploying. I wanna set up an edge cluster and this is just a container for the edge VMs. And this is important because this is basically what allows us to place services on that cluster and then NSXT will actually balance the services around or the virtual routers uh, wherever they need to be. So that's kind of the purpose of the edge cluster and it's super easy to configure. So I like to do it first just so I don't forget later. To do that, just gonna hit add under edge cluster. I'm gonna name it edge cluster 01, super original. And then uh, you'll see edge cluster profile here. Uh, so there's a default and there's no other options. This is basically bi-directional forwarding detection settings or BFD. So think basically I have two edge VMs or, or more even, you can have uh, many more. Um, and what if, how do I know if, you know, I'm edge one, how do I know if edge two is down? Well, NSXT actually runs BFD between the edges to make sure they're still online. So this basically allows you to tune those BFD settings. So if you want, you're welcome to go in and create new profiles and play with it a bit. I'm good with the default though. So if I had any edges deployed already, I would select the edge I wanna add into this edge cluster here, and then I would hit add and it would move over. Uh, but in this case, we don't have any yet. So we will come back to this, but I am gonna add this edge cluster, so it'll be saved. And we'll see here, it's created. And over here, most importantly, under edge transport nodes, we see zero, which means it's basically empty, right? So we're gonna go ahead and fix that. We're gonna create our edge node. To do that, we're gonna hit add edge VM. Now first we gotta give it a name. The name is pretty self-explanatory, just some name. This is gonna be what it's gonna show up in vCenter. Under host name, I do have DNS entries for these, so I'm gonna put those here. Um, let's see, I'll go with that. Uh, for form factor, you don't have to, uh, you're, you don't have to be stuck on picking one form factor versus the other. You can always deploy new edges and swap them out essentially later, uh, all non-disruptively. So not a big deal if you want to kind of upgrade into it, you know, from large to extra large, for example. Uh, one thing worth mentioning, I'm going to go with small for my lab, but uh, the advanced resource reservations, if you open that up, there's one piece here, which is you'll see here memory reservation percent is 100%, which means as soon as I deploy this edge, it's going to take up four gigs of RAM. So I'm gonna change that to zero so that I don't reserve any memory and it's easier on the lab. Now I'm gonna hit next. Now here I'm gonna enter my credentials for my uh, CLI account, for my root account, and then also for my audit account, which is basically a read-only account. I'm gonna enable SSH here uh, I think it's super helpful for, for the home lab, especially as you're troubleshooting and learning. Uh, so I definitely want that enabled. You'll see here it says audit username. This is if I wanted to change this to a different username, I could do that. Uh, I'm fine with it as is. Now it's asking me here for basically, where's the deployment target for this edge VM? Where do I want it to sit? If you recall, if we go back over to vCenter, I created a dedicated vSphere cluster for these edges. So I'm gonna select this cluster right here and the edge VMs will sit on these hosts right here. So let's go do that. So I'm gonna select my vCenter. I'm gonna select my edge cluster and a data store. Now what this is asking for is the management IP settings. You can certainly do this with DHCP and if you have DNS set up, you could Theoretically, you know, I, in my case, I do have DNS, so I could do DHCP and, uh, and map it over and, and that kind of thing, but uh, I highly recommend going with static IP on this. It just seems to be uh, more reliable in my opinion. So I'm gonna go with 172.16.251.110. You do have to add the CIDR here, that's important. If you don't do that, uh, it, it won't let you pass the uh, input validation. I'm gonna add my default gateway here and I need to select a port group for the management interface. So if you recall earlier in the video, I created my prod VDS and a couple of port groups. This is why I created those. So I can reference this one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this stuff in. This is pretty self-explanatory, DNS settings and uh, my NTP settings. 
then hit next. All right, so we're almost we're on the home stretch now. So this set this screen will look familiar if you remember going through the transport node profile configuration. Uh, this is very similar, and that's why I said there's a lot of concepts that are the same, but there are some pieces that are a little different. So right off the bat, you see here the name shows NVDS1. I'm going to make this match the name of the switch on the transport zones that I created previously, which was NSX VDS. For transport zones, I'm going to select both my edge VLAN transport zone because that will give me my upstream connectivity to my physical network. And I'm also going to select the overlay transport zone. Now keep in mind, this is just, I can select as many as I'd like. I can do something like that if I really wanted to. So no big deal. Uh, in my case, I only need these two transport zones. So for uplink profile, I actually made a mistake and I, I didn't realize it. So uh, what I'm going to do is select the NSX Edge Multiple TEPS v uplink profile. Wow, that's a, that's a mouthful. And I'm going to come back to this. So I, I'm kind of glad you guys got to see it because I, I made a mistake. And essentially that mistake was, you see here I have these interfaces are active active and I accidentally made them active standby, or at least I believe so. So after I deploy this, we'll go check it. And the good thing about profiles is if you make a mistake like this, you can just go fix the profile and then come back and reapply it. And it's not a big deal. So we're going to stick with what we got here. No big deal. Uh, I am going to select uh, for IP, I'm going to give it the proper IP, even though it shouldn't really matter. Uh, so this is going to be on the 20 network. And I'm going to give it two IPs because I'm going to do the multi-tap deployment. So I have two interfaces, so I need two IPs. For gateway, that's pretty self-explanatory, and subnet mask. For the interface, I'm trunking all VLANs to this uh, edge. So all I need is a, a trunk port group. And I'm going to do the same thing for both of these. So I'm going to hit finish. All right, so while it's actually deploying the VM, I want to go look at the uplink profiles and we can kind of see where I where I messed up. So if I go over to profiles, and this is the nice thing about these default profiles is you can use them as a guide. Uh, so I used this one. So you'll see here uh, the default edge multi tap uplink profiles, load balance source with uplink one and two. And, and again, those are variables. But what I messed up on is that I actually uh, put M2 in standby. So I need to actually edit that. And I need to move that over here. And I also need to change this to load balance source. And the reason is, if I don't change this to load balance source, this won't work because failover order is basically saying one of these has to be active and one is standby. Load balance source is basically active active. So if you have two entries here, you're doing active active, so you want load balance source. So that was my mistake, but I did want to show you guys that. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go back to our edge configuration. And I'm going to leave it here a couple of minutes, uh, long enough for it to deploy. Once it deploys, I'll go in here and edit it and apply the new uplink profile, and then we should be good to go. All right, so we see that our edge successfully deployed here, but if you probably noticed, it shows an alarm. So let's look at that a little bit more. So if we hit more info, see if we can find anything useful. And I might be jumping the gun. I have done this before. Uh, so that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna close this. I might have jumped the gun already. Uh, but one thing we do know is that I applied the wrong profile. So let me go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to hit edit. And we're going to go down here. And this time we're going to select that MG Edge VLAN 20 uplink profile. Now you notice once I select that profile, it gives me this warning here. And it says that it's cleared my interface mappings, which is these right here. So I need to select those port groups again. Easy enough. I'll select those here and this one as well I'm gonna close that and I'll make sure my IPs are still good that looks fine uh, so I'm gonna hit save so now we should be good and now you'll actually notice the node status shows up now 
So let's SSH into that node and just verify everything looks good. But before I do that, uh, I do want to add it to that edge cluster that we created earlier. And that'll only take a second. So to do that, we're going to go to edge cluster, select our edge cluster, hit edit. All we have to do is go down here and select edge one. And now we move it over into the cluster. As I mentioned, I'm going to SSH into that. So let's check our IP here. Okay. And actually I, I created a DNS entry, but I'll just use this. All right. Our login is going to be admin, and then I'm going to paste my password in there. All right, so we're in, in our edge. A uh, couple of commands. If you do a question mark, it kind of gives you a cheat sheet. You'll be able to see some of the common commands. Uh, one of the most useful I find is get logical dash routers. And let me expand this a bit. All right, so we see here, it just shows one logical router, uh, which is actually not a router, it's actually just a VRF. Uh, and this is for the tunnel. So I wanna show you guys. So the, the mode I'm in now is for the management of the uh, appliance. So I can prove that if I do get interfaces, let me expand this a bit. Oops, that was not helpful for anybody. All right, so if I expand that, You'll see here, if I go through these interfaces, where are we looking? Right here, okay. So you'll see here ETH0, and I've got this IP, which is actually my management IP. The reason that's the only IP I'm showing, and I'm not showing anything on that 10, 25, 20 network that I just configured IPs for, is because I'm not in the right VRF. I can also prove that further if I type get route. You'll see here that the default gateway is actually pointed to the management network. And again, that's because I'm on the management or, or the default VRF more or less. So if I wanna go specifically and look at my overlay traffic and verify those, those tunnels will be good and edge uh, communication should be fine, I need to type VRF zero, which it will always be zero and it, it'll say tunnel here. So that's how you know you got the right one and hit enter. From there, if I type get route now, oops, get forwarding, it changes. That's, you already know it's different. Uh, you'll see now I'm showing a, a default route pointed to this 20.1, which is uh, on my TEP network. So now this is specifically, uh, now we're looking at overlay networking. Uh, if I do get interfaces, you see now I have 20.11 here and 20.10 here. The last verification is to make sure I can ping my default gateway on that 10 network. If I can do that, there's a good chance everything should be fine. So let's do that. We'll do ping 10, 25, 21. And that looks good. So our edge is fully deployed. Uh, that's not to say we have, won't run into things like MTU and that sort of thing down the road, but everything looks good at this point. So for the next step, we're gonna get into the tier zero router configuration, creating interfaces, setting up BGP, etc., And then finally, we'll end all of this series with the actual uh, configuration along things like micro segmentation, NAT, uh, maybe some advanced routing, that kind of thing. So hope you guys are getting some value out of this. I'll see you on the next video.